This is a, a, a stock unit, uh, the FE 5680A, uh, as from the factory. This, there are a lot of these units out here, these option 58 uh, rubidium oscillators, and they're uh, set to this 8.388608.00 frequency. Apparently this must be some reference frequency used in CDMA. Uh, it's the only thing I can think of, but there are a lot of them out there. This happens to be the programmable unit. Uh, it can be programmed from uh, approximately 20 kilohertz up to, they say 25 megahertz, but I, I believe anything above 15 is kind of, uh, they don't advise it, so. Um, but I've tried uh, various different frequencies and it works fine. So uh, anyway, this uh, this is as it is as a stock unit for 8.388608. And um, now I'll kind of zero in on the unit here itself. And uh, you can see over to the uh, to the right, I've got a little uh, uh, adapter that I plugged into the uh, uh, the unit. And basically, what I did is, if I take this out of here, um, you can see what it looks like. I basically took a, an IC socket uh, uh, and uh, cut off. Uh, a portion of it and soldered uh, uh, the, the necessary wires into the socket and it plugs right into this little header that's on the board. The This particular unit, the fifth option 58 units, have uh, have some additional features on it. You can see there's an additional board here and they're stacked. There's three stacked boards here and there's two here. This has the uh, MAX uh, 232 um, uh, RS-232 interface so it makes it pretty easy to interface to the unit and this board has the uh, uh, analog devices AD9830A which is a programmable divider and uh, a, uh, D to A and uh, that's what makes this unit programmable where the other ones are fixed units and you can see the printed circuit boards are a little different they don't have the extra boards on here there's, there's probably uh, I don't know maybe six or seven different uh, variations of these uh, 5680s are around right now floating around the uh, internet and um, I kinda like the programmable ones because I can set the frequency and it has the built-in RS-232 I did add the um, the little uh, pigtail here I wired underneath this board and picked off the signal and brought it out to an SMA uh, connector which on the case uh, that sticks out the front and uh, you can then connect a, a, I have an adapter here for BNC but it makes it much more convenient to get the signal out and I'll show you how what that looks like once I get it all back uh, buttoned up again and you can see uh, you know what it looks like so uh, we'll go through the process of uh, what it takes to program this okay I've got the folder open on my I have a little uh, Dell laptop here in my lab and you can see I've opened the folder and here are the files that uh, I copied over basically from uh, my Windows uh, XP machine and basically there's four files that you really need the bottom four files and uh, so I'll, I'll open up well, first of all I gotta plug the uh, the cable back in <laughs> to the unit so now it's communicating hopefully so what we want to do is we want to, here's the application uh, file right here, HyperTerm. So we'll, uh, we'll open that up. And the first thing it brings up, it's a new connection. And um, so in here, I'm just going to do a RB for rubidium. You can select any one of these icons you want. I just use the default icon to make any difference. The next thing it asks for is uh, um, your COM port, and in this particular case, the USB to RS-232 adapter I have is on COM4. So, and yours may be different, but you want to check that in Device Manager. So I select COM4, and I select uh, OK and then it asks you for um, baud rate and it's it should be set for 9600 
uh, 8 and then 1 and then on flow control very important select none if you put hardware flow control or anything else it will not communicate so you make sure that flow control is a uh, to set to none and apply okay all right the next thing you want to do you want to go to file and you want to go to properties and you want to go to settings and you want to go to uh, ASCII setup click on that and you want to you want to send a uh, line feed and you want to echo type characters locally so you can see what you've typed and um, you click OK and let's zoom out here a little bit and you click OK again alright so now we're in the main screen so now what you want to do you want to see what's in the machine already okay so you do uh, shift and then S for capital S and then hit return and uh, what it will do is it'll return the uh, reference frequency of the unit which is the clock oops let me get this more zeroed in and here is my and this will vary slightly from unit to unit primarily in, in the last the digits after the last decimal point but basically it's 50.255055 and then there is a, a fractional amount um, that's 0 0.059909 hertz so uh, that's your your reference clock frequency that the divisor divides into in order to get your reference frequency that you're going to use uh, output wise and the next uh, is the F equals that's the, your frequency divisor and that's in a hexadecimal number and uh, this particular hexadecimal number represents the, the divisor in order to get the frequency output of 8.388608.00 but we're going to change that so we're going to input uh, as you can see we we still have the up here if I can get way up here the, the, sorry for the screening here the, the 388 and so what we're going to do is we're going to go back down here we're going to enter a new divisor now I've already calculated what that divisor needs to be so I'm going to go through and uh, and put that number in so we do a shift and then F and you see it's going to overwrite this line so don't worry about that equals and now I put 3 2 F 0 alpha delta 9 delta 0 delta 0 0 delta 2 0 0 and I'll hit return okay it says okay now I'll do the shift in capital S and now you can see that number is in there and if you look up at the screen voila we have 10 megahertz which is what I wanted for the output so that's how you how you enter it now to save that frequency so that writes it into the EEPROM register you do a shift plus E and return and now it's it's uh, locked in frequency and you can turn off hyperterminal. And that is it. Let me get this exit out of this. And uh, so now we we have a a new frequency. Uh, the unit is now programmed for. Um, get this up a little ways here is now 10 megahertz so that's your new output frequency okay there's the complete package uh, hooked to the power supply with the uh, uh, connector as you can see from the uh, the outside I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can kind of get a, uh, a little bit better feel for what it looks like you can see there there's the uh, there's the connector I've got a little uh, BNC to SMA uh, adapter on there which I will include with the uh, 
with the unit it makes it easier to disconnect your VNC connector to it. So it's all wired up, the power supply, um, and ready to go. And uh, as you can see, it's locked in at 10 megahertz. Uh, and again, it's a reprogrammable. I will include the uh, um, the uh, programming cable and written instructions, and um, uh, also uh, some. Uh, I will give you a copy on disk of uh, hyperterminal. So if you, if you want to reprogram it, you may do that. Otherwise, it'll be. I'll ship it with 10 megahertz. I will custom program it if you wish. Uh, you just need to let me know what the frequency is, and I can do that. So, thank you for watching.